Yo, 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 Thought Warriors. What is up? Higher Learning is on. It is I, Van Lathan Jr. And it's me, Rachel Lynn Lindsay. Rach, how's your week been? Fan. Fan? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> what is <laughs> Listen, before you got on, we were talking about the heat. Is the heat getting to you? Is the heat getting what to heat? you? Whoa, 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 whoa. The way you talked about my beloved Dallas and the 105 degree weather that you were in for mm-hmm. multiple days and how you'd wake up in the morning and it was 90 something and you go to sleep at night and it was still in the 90s. We are going through what they're calling a heat dome right now. I've never even heat heard dome? of I've never even heard of something like that. You heat watch dome. the news. Mm-hmm. It's like a dome of redness of how far reaching this heat wave is it's right worse. now mm. <laughs> in LA. And you're not talking about it. It's literally 106 degrees right now. Okay. This is a good point. I have to admit. Um, first of all, I just want to let you know that I love Dallas. I told you this, but we focus on the negative. So the fact that I said it's hot in <laughs> Dallas. Which is, which That's is, all <laughs> you would talk about. <laughs> right. You would it's, you I would screenshot how. the weather for five days and post it. <laughs> it's like, it was funny. Um, yo, it is it is mad hot. I'm not gonna lie, but because I'm still dealing with the jet lag, like I've been spending still? time in. Yeah, man, it fucks with me bad. Right, it's dumb. It's dumb. Maybe it's my fat body. Maybe maybe half of my fat body is still in Greece. You know, maybe I left calories, excess it's calories. Tenure. Anyway, um. <laughs> Uh, no, I no. But to your point, though, it is worth kicking somebody because, like, I just I just took Bozeman out. <laughs> it is it is worth it's worth kicking somebody because I just I just took Bozeman out and Bo- we got outside and Bozeman never poops quickly. He really he really makes you earn it. Bozeman's like, nah, I'm about to good use the bathroom and like it's a beautiful day out here. This time, uh uh-uh. uh, Bozeman went right to the grass. Boom, and then looked up at me like, like, let's get inside. I got fur. And it's it's very hot. Very hot outside. I cannot believe you took Bozeman out at three o'clock. What you mean? What am I supposed to do? You have to take him out early in the morning and then right at dusk. It's too hot for the animals to be out. Has Bozeman ever told you it's too hot by his paws? Like maybe, he, but but Bozeman's a big dog though. I so don't, even worse. What I'm saying is like he has to crap. He has to poop in the middle of the day. What, he's going to hold the poop and the pee? He's got to go out in the middle of the day. You only take Copper out for two two breaks. Copper only gets two. But Copper goes to doggy daycare. So he's got exactly. like, a, like a like a handmaiden that's probably like <laughs> wait, <laughs> waiting on him. Copper <laughs> goes to daycare, yes. Mm-hmm. He goes. Um, but no, it's too, it's too hot for the dogs. It's too hot for him right now. Hot. Poor it's Bozeman. I got a new book in. It's called The Third Reconstruction by Peniel Joseph. Oh, shout out to UT. Shout out to UT. Shout out to UT. This is his. There are two jewels of UT. Rachel Lindsay and Peniel Joseph. Other than <laughs> those two people, UT has never produced anything <laughs> worth anything. <laughs> but Peniel Joseph, you guys have uh, to get this book. America's Struggle for Racial Justice in the 21st Century. Uh, Peniel Joseph is f- fantastic. He's got a new book. I, I'm not getting paid for this at all, but I got the book and I'm so excited to read it. And so I hope that you guys will read it too. Oh, look, 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 look. He put me on the back of the thing. I didn't even realize this till now. What does it say? Oh, okay. A marvel. What is- and so, ne- so these are the people that are on the back of the thing. Michael Eric Dyson. I don't know, whoever. But because I, I don't really know. But yeah, so it, it, it Peniel Joseph, the third reconstruction. Yeah. Wow. And he didn't know. I would like to correct you for a second. There are some other jewels that have come from University of Texas. Right. One being pretty hair. And the other oh, pretty being- hair? Pretty hair with yeah. there? Yes, oh. and the other being the judge. I'll be honest with you, though. Pretty Hair and the judge are dope, but they ducked me when I was in Dallas, so I can't, no. I can't give them that same respect. <laughs> Don't do them like that. They did. I can't put their business out there. Don't do no. them like that. I heard pretty they Hair, were, they ghosted me. They were very upset they couldn't. They were so excited. It almost like bothers me how much my parents really like you. I wanted to go into chambers. I've never been in a judge's chambers before. You've my been dad before. Would, my dad would welcome you with open arms. What does your dad wear under the judge robe? A suit. 
Really? It's just like a suit? A full suit. Yes. Can you wear tie. whatever can you wear whatever you want? Sure. So if your dad wanted to wear like Hawaiian shorts and like you sure. can do whatever you want. That's so Absolutely. Dope. That's so dope. Um what else has been going on? I talked to Brian today about my back briefly. I'm gonna go over that. I'm gonna go see him. I'll be sure week. to tell him though though, you sent out though um a tweet requesting assistance with your back. But yeah, of course. knowing I mean, you could have you could have hit up Brian at the same time. You could do I'm both. Gonna, it, it's I don't think you understand how intimidating it is to be around Brian. He's <sighs> fully clothed. He's not walking around. But it's still a but shirt it's on. it's still he's still super lean in the scrubs though. You know how people kind of spill out of their scrubs a little bit? Not Brian. I think he got the extra small scrubs as well. <laughs> the last time I was in there, Brian Brian get his be honest. Be honest with me. Brian get his shit tailored, don't he? No, he doesn't. Yes, he I does. swear. Yes, he does. He does. <laughs> yes, he does. Brian doesn't get his scrubs <laughs> off the rack. Brian get his shit tailored. I like we when we were TMZ tour guides, one of the tour guides, Keith, who I've told you guys about, who eventually got fired for <laughs> chasing somebody in the bathroom and asking for a tip. <laughs> Keith, was my man. Keith, one time I looked at him, I'm like, bruh, like, how does your shirt like fit so well you know what i mean because at that point i was in the best shape but the shirts are they, they're boxy they're not cut to like how's your shirt fit so well bro he goes i'll get it tailored i'm like what it's a true goes, professional yeah he's like I, I take it to the tailor and i get the shirt tailored so that it's tailored to me i'm like god damn and i see brian me and kalika went to us i'm like i look at kalika i'm like the nigga got them, them scrubs tailored that shit tailored man <laughs> did, not, did you go today no i didn't i'm gonna go next oh. week I'm gonna go next week. Um, I got people were people were sending me DMs on Twitter about last week's po- Monday's podcast. Wait, which part? Oh, people were upset about the. Listen, they were equally mad at both of us. About people what? Were, people were upset about your take on student loans, and they were very upset with me about my take on the therapist. The therapist. We tried to get the therapist on the show. Should we? Do you think that we should have the therapist on the show? I do. I do. But I, I don't want to get her in any more trouble professionally. That's the thing. But I, she's going to say something nuts. But I do feel like she needs to say something, especially with the revelation of the other video that's come out, you know, because you set me up for failure. Actually, that's so not I true. Had, I had to defend. I had to defend. I wasn't going back. I had to fall on the sword and just keep going okay i want to i still wholeheartedly believe what i said though i want to clarify that i did not in any way set you up what i was doing was reading the document and then realizing that that video wasn't in there and so i'm I'm in real time i'm doing that and donnie donnie seriously donnie didn't i send you the video i'm like yo <laughs> play this one because I'm, yeah. I'm looking at it in real time and i'm realizing that that video is not in there i'm like yo play this one because this one is this one adds context to what a lot of people feel like were her thoughts. But yeah, so I'm sorry After, that that looked like that. Yeah. Is that what people were DMing you about? No, people were DMing me about student loan forgiveness. They I, got, I got so many loans. I got like a three fucking page thing about student loan forgiveness. It's because you don't you don't have loans, right? No. So you're not with us. You sure don't get you. us. You're not. I'm, you wouldn't, I am like, definitely with y'all. To give an analogy, maybe of what we're going to talk about later. You uh-huh. are Jay-Z. <laughs> I'm the Jay-Z of student loans? <laughs> what? What? That's you. That's you. you I'm a, a gangster capitalist. There's, there's a, a disconnect. disconnect. So why? Why do you feel like there's a disconnect? What did I say? Do you feel like that was so wrong with student loan forgiveness? Do you not remember as you were talking and I was like, wow. Yeah. Wow. I really was expecting you to be like, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But it was as if you didn't understand. You almost made it seem like it's our fault that we choose education and and making that choice. We have to understand the consequence of that. They're going to be loans and you weren't giving any kind of, I guess, weight toward towards that. The loans are outrageous and they're like benefiting off of us. They're telling us we need an education. You weren't giving yeah. that side any weight, which was shocking to me. Greece, you know, you know, maybe you go, you go, you live this fabulous, luxurious vacation. 
in Greece. You're on yachts. Oh, you're yeah. on the water. Oh, yeah. You're just eating at five-star restaurants. Ooh, sauce. Drinking ill. Disrespecting the food. Yeah, drinking ill, oh, then throwing it yeah. up. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, oh, turning your nose at it. You come back, you're a changed man. You're a different person. You are the Jay-Z of student loans. I'm the bourgeoisie of student loans. Look, I, this one, look, I had somebody that told me how inappropriate the analogy that I made about moving to L.A. was. And I thought about it. Okay. I think it's a perfect analogy. Oh, no. Let, and, 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 let, let, me t- and, and, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. I wanted to be in, in I wanted to be in entertainment. Right? If I yes. want to be in entertainment, like the person that wrote me said, like you didn't have to move to LA. I had to go to school. That's not true. I had to move to Los Angeles to do what I'm doing. Say right? I, sure. I had to move to Los Angeles to do what I'm doing, right? Had to. There's no way around it. So mm-hmm. at some point, for me to be able to plan to move to LA, number one, there were no loans that I could take out to do that. Maybe there were, but I didn't know. So I had to under I have to understand what that's gonna cost me. I don't think that I think that if if anything, what I'm I'm not saying that people don't have to go to school. They definitely have to go to school. But the fact that you have to go to school doesn't mean that you shouldn't factor in what it's going to cost you to go to school because because th- I look at this the same way I look at reparations. They definitely should pay reparations to black Americans, right? But what if they don't? Like what if they don't? How how are we going to succeed in America at the economic sort of uh disadvantage that we have now if they never make it right? Because they don't have to. And on the student loan front, unless we're going to subject another generation of people to having loans that they can't pay back, I think now is a good opportunity to have a conversation, a real conversation about people taking on this type of debt. And if you feel like you're still going to do it, still do it. But along with that conversation, we have to put maybe a cap on tuition, (laughs) maybe. And we have to talk about sort of the way the schools and the loan people are, you know, playing games against America's working class. But having said that, there's still a component to this, and I don't understand why it's so controversial. There's still a component to this to where if you're looking at a situation to where you're going to take off sixty five, seventy five, a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt when you graduate, especially knowing what we know now that the jobs aren't out there for you to nuke that loan money when you when you when you get out of school. We definitely have to have a conversation I feel like about people and how much debt they're going to saddle themselves with. And I think that's a responsible conversation to have because I don't think people were having that 15, 20, 30 they years weren't. ago. Right. So what's wrong with having that conversation? And I really don't understand what the big deal is. I don't think that anyone was saying that you can't have that conversation. That wasn't the issue. It was that you were dismissing because I I brought up the example to you when we were coming up. Education was the way to succeed. That was the path to success. You brought up the L.A. example. You wanted to enter a specific field with a specific talent, and that was the specific place to go. Going to college in general is not as specific. It was you go to college, it's going to provide you with an education. You're going to spread your wings and find a specialized field that's going to get there. Like it casts a wider net. And so I think that's why I had a problem with the L.A. thing, because that's it is a choice. You're right. They're both choice. They're choices that, that were made. But that is more specific as opposed to you need a college degree to succeed. You wanted to do something in L.A., in a specific way. Do you understand like the difference? I think no, what I, people- not, not really. See, I, I I think I understand that they're I understand that they're not the same, but I don't see the difference. What I'm saying is I had to move to a place that was super expensive, right. super expensive, where I had to have a car. I didn't have a car at the, uh, at the time. And I had to figure out in my life how I was going to make that happen. Like, sure. I, like for me, a lot of people just go out there and then they do it, right? And so for me, I had to look at that and make a plan to do it. And what I'm what I'm essentially saying here is, I know that you have to go to college. You you that America has made it to where you have to go to college. That doesn't That's mean it. that 
But but what I'm saying is that doesn't mean that you shouldn't have a plan to pay your loans your loans back. Okay, but that's but that's what that's the difference. You choosing to go LA is a decision that you made for yourself that you put on yourself. You just said it. America, this country tells you, or at least it did tell you at a time when we were coming up, that you had to go to college to be successful. And they didn't also tell, but like, if that's the only option, you're not giving me a choice. My success is dependent on this education that you are making super expensive for me. And the flip side of it is what's not happening. And that's the conversation that you were talking Mm -hmm. about. We're not having a conversation about financial literacy. We're told you will have success, but I agree with that part. This country was telling us you had to have this route to have success, and that success yeah. would afford you the opportunity to pay back what you were borrowing, and it doesn't. Right. That's and, the issue. And so, right. And so, when I, the only thing that I'm saying is, okay, cool. Student loan forgiveness is good. Forgive the loans, the 50000 whatever. Forgive them to the entire deal, right? When I went to college, I didn't take out loans, but I did do other things that college students did to fuck my credit up. I did buy a computer that I couldn't pay for. I did uh I did run up get run up credit cards that I couldn't pay for. All the same stuff like when you as soon as you get there they have a credit card thing like set up for the kids to come get a credit card and all of that stuff. I did all of that stuff. The reality is my life still got affected by that because my credit did and I had to figure out how to pay that stuff off. So if I'm talking to somebody now, I'm going to say to them, hey, when you go to school, maybe don't run to the credit card visa kiosk and get the thousand dollar limit credit card when you don't have a job to pay it back. Or you might even be using your loans to pay it back. So now you're double dipping into this entire situation. Like, I guess for me, when I look at something that you feel like you have to do to succeed, whatever that thing is, because a lot of people need like a lot of people need a lot of stuff to succeed, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you mm-hmm. want to be a YouTuber, you might have to get a brand new camera. You might have to get a different type of setup. There are things that you can do, the things that there are expenses to every single step to success that you want to have, right? Mm-hmm. And you have to figure out how it is that you're gonna pay for that stuff. Now with Correct. the with, with 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 the with the situation with the loans, sure there's extra pressure to go to college. But what I'm telling you is our choice is either to Right now, our choice is either to have another generation saddled with this debt that's a drag on the economy, right? Because they don't have the spending power. Or our choice is to say, hey, maybe we maybe we're not at the position, right? We're not in the position right now in America where these institutions are going to be willing to address this, but we will. Especially for young black kids who are disproportionately affected by this. Sure. We, we like we need to be able to have conversations about how much debt you can sustain in your life at 21 or 22 years old and still live a viable life with yeah. the education that you got. And because if DeSantis wins or if if down the line fucking Tom Cotton wins or J.D. Vance wins, they're not going to forgive your loans. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, so when, so what no, I'm telling no. you is, so they're not gonna forgive them. So, I know, you, I know you guys are mad that the old miser van had to say maybe we should look at the other side of it too. But I don't think. Fuck. Listen, I, 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 no one's expecting for each president to forgive your loans. People are just like, how are we gonna fix this education system in regards to how much it costs to go to to get it? Right. Well, they need to they they need to fix it. They need to fix that in many levels, though. And once again. We need to also get rid of the fallacy that in order to be a successful American, you have to go to college. I think that that's that has that is definitely I would say changed since mm-hmm. we were coming up. All right, All right. I wish I would have. Everybody out wants to be an influencer. You know what I mean? These kids yeah. want to be influencers. <laughs> you know, you can start. You start. You know, start doing your thing now. Look, I will say this. To skip social social classes, especially for black people, college has been college is you know amazing. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. a, and still the best way. But it's gonna be hard to skip those social classes if you come out owing two hundred thousand dollars. You know, I got I got a friend of me that's very close. Went to Morehouse, then went to Stanford. Came out was getting that bread right, getting that guap. I'm killing this nigga now. 
oh my god he's underwater with these loans you're such I a just, bad person I, 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 I'm just joking he knows him. he just <laughs> come on ho go to the next topic <laughs> the next topic the next topic is the uh the big deal of the day. Unfortunately, it is not in any way a big deal of the day. That is something fun to talk about, but we have to talk about sometimes why it sucks being black in America and you can't even drink water to quench your thirst. All right, Jackson, Mississippi is the site of the latest environmental disaster to plague America, specifically black Americans. There is a water crisis in Jackson right now. The water system in Jackson, Mississippi, the state's capital and largest city, failed earlier this week. Most of the city's 160,000 residents were without safe drinking water, prompting the Republican governor of the state, a gentleman by the name of Tate Reeves, to declare a state of emergency. He warned that there wasn't enough running water to fight fires, to reliably flush toilets, and to meet other critical needs. It's not clear when the city will have safe drinking water again. There have been problems in Jackson with the infrastructure going on a year. Uh, I remember watching the 60 Minutes Plus report of near about a year ago um, where a gentleman was talking about the fact that the water system already was screwed up. What has happened now is there was intense rain, which flooded the Pearl River. Shout out to Pearl River Junior College, um, which it flooded the Pearl River and it has strained the largest water treatment plant, which is called OB Curtis, uh, which was you know, having a lot of problems already. So um, Jackson, Mississippi is 80% black. It has been ignored. The infrastructure has been terrible, not just the water situation for a long time now. And now we have yet another home for black people where little black kids are dipping their toothbrushes in bottled water to brush their teeth before they go to school in the morning. It's almost unreal. It's unreal. Not just that this is happening in our country, but that this has been going on in Jackson, Mississippi for years and nothing has been done. And these people, these residents of Jackson, Mississippi, depend on their elected officials to take care of their basic needs, right? That's why you elect someone to fight on your behalf on behalf of those constituents, but these elected officials don't even live in the city of Jackson. They live outside of it. And if you go back and you look, 2016, state, of, state health officials were alerted about elevated levels of lead in the drinking water. Nothing was done. In 2020, the EPA issued an emergency order that posed Jackson's water system as an intimate and substantial endanger endangerment to its residents. Winter of 2021, they had storms that were across the country um, <clears throat> with ice and it messed up their water system. Pipes were bursting, nothing was done. The, uh, citizens or residents were without water for weeks, thousands of residents, tens of thousands of them. And for years, the city has had disruptions with water. They've had a reoccurring, a recurring boil water advisory because the water has been contaminated. I already said lead, but also with E. coli. It is well documented in this city for years that they have had issues with their water system, but nothing has been done. And what makes it even worse is that in 2020, there were two bills that were put up to help with the water system and the Republican legislature, majority Republican legislature, I should say, voted to have it not happen. They weren't even trying to help these people when it's well documented that there were issues in the city. And there's and you can't help but recognize, as you already stated, the statistics of who, what the demographics are of the city of Jackson, 80 percent black. Most of the people live out, white people live outside of it. It's even referenced in the articles when you read about it, that it's a, an issue with white flight. And the only thing that this boils down to is they don't care about the people that are living in this city because they don't look like them. They don't have the same socioeconomic status that they do. It's yeah. out of sight, out of mind, and they're right there. And I'm telling you right now, we talked about this before. Not just the state legislature, but it, with Congress, the U.S. Congress, there are four seats right now that are up 
in the midterms for re-election, Republicans, you got to vote them out. They don't give up. And, and I, I didn't even say the, the fact that Jackson is a majority Demo, uh, Democrats, but it's the Republican legislature that runs the state and also those who are fighting on their behalf, uh, fighting, I'm using air quotes, on their behalf in Congress. You got to vote them out. Um, yeah, you definitely have to vote them out. So, I mean, um, the tale of what happened in Jackson is, you know, all too uh, familiar. White flight happens, which erodes the city's tax base. And then you don't have um, money for public works, right? You don't have money for public works. And then situations like this uh, end up happening. It reminds me of something that was going on when I was in college. I was driving through a city called Faraday, Louisiana. And What's it? Faraday. Faraday, okay. Faraday, Louisiana. Faraday, Louisiana. That's what I was driving through. And I remember I saw something on the, uh, I passed by a store and the store said closed, no water. Right, closed, no water. And I looked at another store that says closed, no water. Faraday is an all, like a, a, a like an all black town, basically a small black town. Central Louisiana. If I can remember correctly, it's a close no water, close no water, close no water, close no water. And I get back to school, and a friend of mine, Ron, Ron used to work at Griff's uh, near Louisiana Tech's campus. You, Griff's was like this greasy spoon that you would go to and get like a pork chop sandwich. You know what I mean? You love that, right? Like mm -hmm, I, just, I, do. Used to, I used to watch people just eat a fucking slab of pork. Hunk of beef. I mean, pork. Yes. <laughs> just a big no, I love hunk it. Hunk of pork. I was like, God damn, nigga, on a sandwich. Fuck, bro. I feel like that eel. Anyway, um, <laughs> I asked Ron what was going on. And Ron was like, oh, yeah, we, don't, we ain't got no water. Something happened with the pipes. I'm like, what? What do you mean? He's like, well, they found a dead dude in our water supply. What? Was, yeah, he goes, they found a dead dude in our water supply, which then made them have to go fix the like the 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 water or whatever, fix whatever the thing was. And then when they were trying to fix it, they broke something and now the town doesn't have any water. And I was like, Well, what y'all do? This is the first time I heard of a town that's like, well, what do y'all do? He's like, Oh, we gotta we gotta drive into nearby towns and like get bottles of water and have the water come in. That's what we have to do it. And I, 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 the reason why that struck me is because I thought about that whenever I thought about Flint. I thought about that whenever I thought about Jackson. It's because like the real place that racism rears its ugly head to me is not in the these. It's not in videos of Karens, right? It's not in uh, it's not in even police brutality videos, right? Because those are, those are flashpoint moments when implicit biases get the better of people, and then they do the things that their mind tells them to do. Mm -hmm. That's racism, of course. But what I think is, how much harder is it in your day to day life, your day to day life, to be black? Like, how much more difficult it is? Is it? You know, you might not run into a cop every single day, although that is a a somewhat day-to-day -day occurrence if you live in certain neighborhoods. So I, mm -hmm. the point, you know, I, I know that uh, you can't detract or, or subtract um, what it means to to be black in America from oh, from interactions with the police. But I'm saying, you wake up in the morning to go to school and you're you're brushing your teeth or you want to boil some eggs. Because you are black, you can't do that. Because nobody cares, right? Because even the politicians that you're talking about in that situation. They don't, there's nothing in it for them to make sure that little black kids have clean water. They don't Absolutely. get anything for that. There's no gold star. There's no next term. There's there's none of it. What they really wish uh, would happen would be that all the Negroes would move out of Jackson so they could move back in and have it like it used to be. Like this is, in my opinion, environmental terrorism from neglect. And it plagues black children everywhere. Mm -mm. And it plagues, plagues black people everywhere. So what we're going to have to do, Rachel, is what we always have to do is we're going to have to fix this and we're going to attempt to give you guys some um, some resources to help out in Jackson if you want to. But i tell you one thing. I don't know how you feel about this. I am going to make sure that there are specific names of people to blame for this. I don't have the research now to do it, right? But I want... Every single podcast and all my socials and everywhere that I can, I want the names of the peoples 
people whose job it is to make sure that Jackson has clean drinking water. And I want to continuously make sure that we make them famous. As famous as Kavanaugh was uh, in the aftermath of the Dobbs decision or Amy Coney Barrett was or Clarence Thomas was, we need to know who's responsible for the people of Jackson, Mississippi, black and white, not having clean drinking water. And we need to make sure that as this country continuously morphs into um, a developing nation, we need to know why that's happening. Because too many times these things are just crises that we do water drops for and then we move on to the next one. This is this dysfunction is happening every day. I mean, if it's been going on for a long time, start with the governor of Mississippi, Tate Reeves. Start with Tate Reeves. Why are you just now declaring this a, um, a crisis, a state of emergency? You should have been doing this. This has been a problem. And I, I'm very curious as to as this this trillion dollar um, infrastructure bill, is this in any way going to be trickled down into Mississippi to help out or wherever this has happened? You just named another city. I mean, obviously, this is what's making news, but we know that Jackson, Mississippi doesn't stand alone. There are other cities, towns out there that are suffering from this as well. So how how quickly is that money going to trickle down to help these type these communities? Or does it have to be, you know, something that we're already talking about in the media where it's too late and people are already suffering? Like I yeah. No, I mean, yo, you're 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 absolutely right. So I was able to um to find a website called the com uh, uh, for the Community Foundation of Mississippi. Okay. The Community Foundation of Mississippi, and of all the places that I've been able to go, and um, and look at resources as to what you can do to help, uh, this place, it, this website has the uh, most thorough resources for people to be able to help. It's uh, for Mississippi.org. That's F O R Mississippi M I S S I S S I P P I dot org. The Community Foundation for Mississippi. You should. Uh, go there. There are several different funds, organizations, and movements underneath that one on that one website. There are a million different ways you can help on that one website. And I would really, it's based in Jackson, Mississippi. I would really, really recommend everybody who wants to help think about what a ten dollar bottle of water would do right now. Think mm-hmm. about what you could do by sending a couple of gallons of water down there. I'm calling on the Thought Warriors right now to get off of Reddit. All right? <laughs> get off of Reddit. Stop We're going to com- post it in Reddit. Stop complaining. I won't be posting it in Reddit. I'll, well, stop complaining for a second and <laughs> get, uh, uh, get to a split space and actually help some people drink some water. And, um, you know, I know that, uh, that, I, obviously, I, I'm kidding with you guys, but I know people in the, in our in our listenership have good hearts, and you know this might be the difference between a kid having just a, a kid having a, a, a sip of water. It's hot right now, too, man. It's oh my god, sweltering southern heat, and they don't have no water to drink. Listen, when y'all do it, when y'all donate or whatever it is that you do, send it to us. Let's follow. Do something back for every single person that does it. I know y'all would love to have Van follow y'all back. Oh, I'm not. Following I know you y'all. would. I'm yes, he will. Y'all. I will. I'm not I'll... following y'all. Do we have, do we have the mayor y'all. of Jackson on? He's black, we, you know. We're, yeah, we're gonna be reaching out to a. We're, okay. We're, we're gonna be on top of this. This is an issue that we're gonna be on top of. Um, and by the way, there's not. We're not near a solution here. They don't know when the water is going to be back on in Jackson, Mississippi. They don't know when the water is going to be back on with no boil warning. Like we don't, it's And it's they're not. saying, they're saying to fix it. It's so deeply rooted because I guess they hired a company years ago to fix it. And the company was not well equipped and messed things up um, with that infrastructure in their water system. The city actually sued this company. It's going to take billions of dollars they're estimating to get it right. Yeah. Well, give them the money. <laughs> okay. I, I, and I hate to be this fucking guy. I don't give a fuck how many billions of dollars that it takes, right? You can send billions no, yeah. of dollars of aid packages across seas to other people who need it. You can spare a couple right. of billion dollars for the people in Jackson, Mississippi. Not equating the two, two completely different things. But what I'm saying is it's not for a lack of money. Fix whatever the fuck you got to fix and do it quickly. 
And if the feds need to get involved in this situation, then they need to get involved in this situation. If this is something that Mississippi, for whatever reason, obviously, the 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 governor you said is the the tip of the spear. Tate there. Reeves. Tate, Tate Reeves. Tate Reeves. Tate Reeves. Is this something they don't feel like they can do? That's fine. Then this is the t- this is the point where those votes that you cast in November for those people where they need to take charge, get in there, and figure out what the fuck we gotta do to make sure these people can drink some water. Man. God damn it, our cousins from right there in Mississippi, our cousins. Damn. All right, uh, Serena Williams. She had an upset win in the U.S. Open. Legendary career, Serena Williams. Yep. Uh, she won a thrilling second round match. Um, she beat Annette Con. Take your time. Take your time. Viet. I don't know who this person is. I'm sorry to this woman. She was. <laughs> <laughs> She's the second seeded player at the tournament. Uh, Serena beat her seven six. Um, she lost. She dropped the second set, and then she won the last set, dominating fashion in Flushing Meadows. How inspired are you right now by Serena Williams? Always inspired by Serena Williams. I I actually looked up tickets to the U.S. Open. Yeah, I, it there. just it snuck up on me. I didn't realize. I mean, I watched the first round. I was like, oh my gosh! I didn't realize it was happening right now. I was in Philly, and I was like, oh, I could go. Tickets tickets were like five to six thousand dollars for the good seats. I'm not van. I can't afford that. Everybody's not able. I can't afford that. What? what are you talking I can't about? afford those kind of. Got a pool. I can't afford. Don't, talk, don't don't ever talk. And that's don't where talk all my to, money is. That's don't talk the games with me, is. nigga. <laughs> like, where, Rachel, hey y'all, y'all. Rachel be talking this bullshit. Rachel got a waterfall in her backyard. True or false, Rachel? <laughs> Rachel, true or false? You're exaggerating. Rachel, true or false? It's See, not that's a what waterfall. I'm saying. You're you're politicking and how us right now. Even know that because it didn't. Do, I, Turn it on. You, when you ah, <laughs> boom! You got a waterfall. Don't talk to me about some waterfall. some some U.S. Open tickets. Like, like I look over at Brian. I'm that's like, where my, that's where me, my is. me and Brian are in the pool, shirtless. Bad mistake for me. I look over and and I, yo, bro, is that a waterfall? He go, he's on laying on his back. He's like, yeah. <laughs> that's not true. Mm-hmm. Stop. Anyways, mm-hmm. I'm watching what she's doing is incredible. Um. I saw Bill Simmons tweet and I'm not, I don't want to misquote it, but it was so true about how, you know, when someone's at the end of their, I'm paraphrasing here, the end of their career, just how they not muster up the strength, but just how they just show what an incredible athlete they are as they're nearing the end of their career. It's like, like, you know, people like say old man strength. It's like, they just show how incredible they are. And that's what we're seeing right now with Serena. And I'm, Hoping she goes all the way. It really let's, is fun to let's watch. Let's find let's find Bill's exact Final tweet Bill's so tweet. that people so that people don't find a reason to get mad. <laughs> get on Bill ass. Right, this, is what, this is what Bill said. I've been following sports my whole life, and one thing never changes: the aging near the end superstar and probably thriving one more time is still the greatest thing to watch. He is right. It was a, it's a, it was amazing when Ali would do it back in the day. It was amazing when Tom Brady would do it. When Tom Brady's been doing it, he's 45, even though I don't think Tom Brady counts. I saw Tom Brady at a fuck. I saw Tom Brady at a goddamn press conference looking like one of the Stepford wives. It was like he looked like an animatronic figure from It's a Small World in Disneyland. I'm like, yeah. they Tom is turning Tom Tom had a face. Brady had a fucking facelift. Oh, he's well, turned into a bad bitch. He he disappeared for days. I mean, weeks. He was uh two weeks. He was away from the team. So I mean, come on now. Yeah. So you do, um, you do the math. But he's playing at a very high level. And, and just watching Serena, I, I can't watch her. I can't watch the matches. Why? Because I care too much. That doesn't make sense to me. No, you don't understand. I don't. You don't understand. Help me. It, I care too much to watch it. I don't see what you, you don't want to see. You don't want to see. I don't want her way. to lose. Yeah, yeah. So I can't just watch it. I remember I have I've had a panic attack over the uh, the the Lakers Celtics series back in 2008, 2009 or whatever it was. Down. I had a pa- I couldn't <laughs> watch. Ask Kalika. Well, like it was it was like it was a situation to where like 
sometimes I get nervous and like I'll turn from the game at third down. If it's a big third down, I can't watch it. What if we don't get it? What if Serena would have lost and I'm watching it? Why does that make my life better to, to watch her lose? I would rather not watch. And after she won, just watch the highlights for a week. Because now I know what happens. Well, you know what to watch the to watch it all play out, the ups and downs. You know what I mean? Because that that game went to, I mean, that match went to three, three rounds. The first one was two. So to right. see, oh, she lost the second one. Will she come back in this third uh round? Did you call it that? No, nigga, it's called a set. You're making set. my fucking brain bleed. <laughs> like it's, it was like they, they played, they, they they played three sets. <laughs> That's I couldn't think of the word. I was like, well, shit, I'm gonna go around. <laughs> Watch her come back in the third set and dominate in that way. It's nice to see it as a whole. Nah, you're and this right. is why I have no business paying $5,000 for a seat if I can't get the terminology right. Did you see Gladys Knight was there? Okay, she was at the first match. Yeah. She was there in the first round. In yeah. the second round, I don't know if she was there, but they, she, they didn't show the right person. So... She was there though in the first one. Do you know the people that were calling the game? Is that are you defending them? No, 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 no. Okay. She really was at the in the first the first round. Glass Nigga, night was there. I'm sure she was. That but wasn't the, Glass Night in that picture. But what they showed, no, it wasn't. So they flashed a Dion Warwick, and then they said Gladys Knight is here. Listen, y'all don't understand how fucking annoying that is. Like why, like white people, y'all don't get tired of being annoying. Like, just say the right... I, I remember this used to happen so often at TMZ. Like, so often. I, it's like so often they put up... And it would be when it would be always in a worse situation when people died or some shit like that. They put up the wrong person or something like that. Like, I don't know. It's You, you know, you, you get to a situation, I don't know, like somebody passed away, the guy from Earth went and fire died, and they put up a picture of Barry White or some dumb shit. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? Just take the extra. If you don't know who it is, shut the fuck up. It, it, has ESPN addressed this? Have they talked about the fact they in, that's insulting to us? I feel like I would do some shit like this. Clearly. See, she has three. She played three rounds. <laughs> I feel like I would be fuck, fucking man. loud and wrong. I would mess up Gladys and Dion, obviously, but I might be like mess up some confuse some white folks. <laughs> this is why this is why we need our own media companies, because we need to be able to fuck up white people's names. Because I, I, I mean, I, I, it could happen. You like, just who? did it. You just who? did it with the second seed. You quit. What? You were trying to pronounce her name, and uh, you quit. Ain't, and you she said, ain't nobody. "Sorry to this woman." She ain't she, nobody. Well, she she hasn't earned the right for me to care about her name yet. A couple more <laughs> years of dominance, maybe. <laughs> Who you who are two who are two white people that you used to confuse? Donna, you can jump in here too. Give me two white people that you've confused before. Um, there definitely is. It's a white male. Was it Ryan Reynolds and mm, well, <laughs> non-famous people? There were two people I went to law school with that I never could remember their names. I'm not going to say them, but um, I always confuse those two people for the life of me. It took me a couple of months to realize they weren't the same person um i don't know i'm sure it happens donnie give me two white people that you used to confuse for each other i confused dennis quaid with someone that i'm i'm forgetting this the other person that i'm for um i confused him kevin with. costner it is kevin costner there we go thank you yep let me tell you guys something right now speaking of kevin i costner. see it i see it donnie which is yeah. why i said that Yep, Speaking of Kevin it. Costner, first of all, shout out Dennis Quaid, shout out Kevin Costner, shout out the Dutton Ranch, fucking Yellowstone. No, I don't, I don't want. Like, hold on for a second. I, I, don't I gotta show you something you I bought. Spoil it. No, Rachel. don't spoil it. He's a spoiler. Donnie, do you watch it? Don't do it, Donnie. I don't you watch don't. it. I don't plan on watching it. But I do plan on watching Yellowstone, and I really need him to stop doing this. Look what I bought. Boom. <laughs> I bought a Dutton Ranch Yellowstone t-shirt. Tag I still be, on it and everything. I wow. want to be a part of the Dutton Ranch. I'm sick of this Negro life. <laughs> I want, I, I want, like, How many times am I going to have to call you Jay-Z on this podcast? 
The, the Duttons are doing their thing, man. Fuck. I was watching more Yellowstone. I was watching more Yellowstone this morning. Yellowstone. Are you caught up? My, yeah, but I just I rewatch it. Yellowstone might be the that's sexiest tight. white show that's ever. It's very sexy show. It's Are you watching eighteen eighty three? Uh no, no. Let me tell you something. I, I have a problem watching white people in the olden times. Cause they, cause because. whenever you, cause, cause whenever they, cause whenever they do a story about white people in the olden times, they always try to make like a good white person. And you just can't convince me that there were any good white people in 1883. Nobody wanted to be cool with nobody. It was one guy, John Brown. They got him the fuck out of here. Nobody <laughs> wanted to be cool. Nobody <laughs> wanted to. Like, Kalika said this one time. Okay, so look. Hey, Kalika, Kalika said the funniest thing. Kalika, remember when Jay-Z and Beyonce wore like the diamond or whatever that? Sure. Remember that joint? Mm -hmm. So, like, I asked her. I was like, you think that they knew that the diamond was racist? Whatever, and she goes, it doesn't matter if they knew. She's like, they found a diamond in like 1870 or something, shit like that. Oh, they should have known that in no goddamn 1870 that white people was up to no damn good and it wasn't a good situation <laughs> with the fucking diamond. It was nothing good right. that was going on. There. Yeah. So 1883 might take, because they're going to try to make them good white people. And I just can't believe it. Yeah, you know, I can't believe in, you know, even when I watch Django, I'm like, he was cool as fuck, but I don't know if that nigga really exists. I guess there were some. Shout out to the white people. I'm sorry to those men. Rachel, do you think that rap lyrics should be used to convict people in court? It depends. All I right. think that if you're confessing, if, if I'm investigating you on a specific charge mm -hmm. or... I believe that there's some sort of suspicion. I have probably not even probable cause. I think a higher degree than that. But I think that if you are speaking to something that you have been charged for, it is fair game. If you've been indicted, maybe they use it in the indictment. If I've, I, I think that there are circumstances where it works. I know people are going to be upset with me. I get the whole freedom, freedom of speech, expression. I get all of that. But if you are going to confess to something in a form of art, whether it's a lyric, whether it's a painting, whether it's a book, something like that, I think that it's fair game. Well, the Fulton County DA agrees with you. It says, she says that people can continue to be angry about it and she's going to continue to use the lyrics. Her name is Fannie Willis. She addressed the ongoing criticism facing the use of art in criminal cases. Okay? This is the audio from Fannie Willis. Rap lyrics in prosecutions. Do you have a thoughts about that? I think that uh, I would welcome an opportunity to sit down with Hank Aaron uh, and discuss uh, that proposed l legislation. Um, is it Hank Aaron or John? I, I don't think that it will be successful. It's, it's I think if Aaron. you decide to She's admit upset. your crimes She's over upset. a beat, She's I'm going to use it. <laughs> they could have corrected her. <laughs> I'm not targeting anyone, but however, you do not get to uh, commit crimes in my county and then decide to brag on it, which you do that for a form of intimidation and to further the gang and not be held responsible. One of the lyrics in, used in this indictment, just one of the lyrics is, me and my crew striking out, striking in all black, send me the drop, we'll kick in the house, if we steal a car, we're going to take off the tag. Well, they're kicking indoors, committing home invasions, uh, and now I'm using those lyrics that they're admitting to doing that. I'm going to continue to do that. People can continue to be angry about it. Um, I have some legal advice. Don't confess to crimes on rap lyrics if you do <laughs> not want them used, or at least get out of my county. So, Shout out to Hank Aaron, who's trying to catch, <laughs> who right now is trying to catch a fly ball in heaven up there playing a good old game. <laughs> you know, Babe Ruth is up bad. And he's like, what the hell did I do to this woman? She's talking about Representative Hank Johnson, whose rap act is made, made headlines earlier this month. He's trying to uh, spearhead the movement to not let 
rap music be admissible in court. I want to read off a lyric to you guys right now from one of my favorite songs, Who I Smoke. Okay. This is the lyric. I told the rocket when I travel, I'm pistol packing the heat. Hold on. Do it, do it again, Donnie. I told the rocket when I travel, I'm pistol packing the heat. I was lurking on this page and I caught him lacking in Houston. We let off shots. He got shot and went live. I was tweaking like, fuck, man, that bitch ain't die. Okay. Give it to you one more time. I told the rocket when I travel, I'm pistol packing in Houston. I was lurking on his page and I caught him lacking in Houston. We let off shots. He got shot and went live. I was tweaking like, fuck, man, that bitch ain't died. All right. Lock him up. Now, I want you guys, I want, I just want, because everybody's, it's a very controversial subject. I want people to know what he's talking about in that situation. What There's a rapper about? named Julio Fulio who went to Houston. And went on his and went on his live. Okay, they saw that he was uh, they they whoever the assailants were in this case saw that he was in Houston and uh, and saw his location, pulled up on him, shot him. Everybody in the whole world learned that he had survived this attempt on his life when he went live. So in this rhyme, he's saying we saw him on his live, we pulled up, we shot him. And then, boom, I was like, fuck, man, that bitch ain't die. You guys. Let's let's draw some, let's have some real talk right now. Let's have some real talk as a family. Because I realize that. I'm going to say this and then people are going to be pissed off. You just can't do it like that, man. You can't. Like you just, you can't, you can't look, look back in the day, rappers was killing each other back and forth. I just shot a bunch of niggas, blah, blah, blah. I'll shoot you in your face. Ha ha ha. Like everybody's rapping about killing everyone, selling the most dope. So all of that, all of that was true. Specifically confessing to individual crimes. Yeah. And tell, telling names of individuals that you have killed is going to make people think that you actually killed them. What right. are we talking about? Like, I, I, I get it. I'm the old nigga nerd in the room. I understand it. You just can't do it like that, man. You can't say, we'll go on there and give details to how you killed someone and then expect mm -hmm. the authorities aren't going to say, oh, well, maybe they did do it. What the fuck? Like, right. like I, I, I don't even take my word for it. Look at the lyrics of this song. By the way, I could do this for 150 more songs. King Vaughn in the song says, Caught a put a pretty out bitch in the morgue. He's talking about Ja'Kara Barnes, a.k.a. K.I., a, a, a young woman in Chicago that, that was 16 or 17 years old, a killer in her own right, allegedly, that they think that he killed. So what are they supposed, what are people supposed to do is you know my thing. You know what's interesting? If you, if that lyric, if you wrote that song out in a letter and you mailed it to someone, nobody would have a problem if that was used as evidence. Right. But because it's in the form of, a, it's the same thing. It's in the form of a song now that there's some sort of debate over it. But if that was written out, we would be like, oh, that was a conf he used it. You would be using evidence, and nobody would have an issue with it. Mm. What? Tell me the difference. Tell me the difference. <sighs> Self snitching. All right. Now, uh, the current indictment in Fulton County is focused on the uh, alleged actions of a group claimed to be known as Drug Rich, which prosecutors claim started in 2016 and um, have have made victims out of a lot of prominent people: uh, Mariah Carey, Calvin Ridley, and more. People that they've that they've targeted, the drug rich gang. I don't know very much about them, so you know, don't come for me. But stop, just stop. That's How about easy. this? How about we change it up? How about do your crimes and then try to get away? Try to get away. Okay, just well, don't do crime. No, but you also can do the crime. you can speak in general and not in specificity, right? I, I mean, look. I, I, look, sometimes crime is a part of poverty. You do the crime, you know. If I'm not talking about kill okay. somebody, but if you got to rob, you got to rob, you know. Okay. Rob, rob a nigga. You go get you you get robbed. 
Go ahead. You you be you be understanding of the anyway. person that robs you. Okay. Go ahead. You wouldn't be understanding of the person that will rob you. Let's say somebody came up to rob you. I'm like, yo, man, take this, bro. I feel you. It's hard out here. Yeah. Is it gonna go that smoothly? Are they putting no. a gut? Like, is it armed robbery? Are they? Well, just yeah, have you ever been robbed before? Have you ever been a victim of crime? I, I've been. I've never been robbed before. Yeah, they got they got me one time. Like, I, what I, were like you? In daytime, nighttime. Was it like you walking on the street? Were you standing in line? They, for so, was it in so, the car? so nighttime in in the bottom, Baton Rouge, and they they hit me up and they were like, it was a cautionary tale. Cause they was like, now you know damn well you need you don't need to be down here, man. What you got? They taught you a lesson. They taught me a lesson. It's like you oh know damn well you don't need to be, man. Come here, man. What you got? Hey, man, I'll take you like, here. I'll take you a little ten dollars. You know now you this is what it costs for you. This is the admission price. Get the fuck from around here. You know you ain't supposed to be out here. And just flash the gun, and then I was like, hey, go there, go to ten bucks. And ten <laughs> bucks was all I had. And all I had. You know what I mean? Shout out to him. Stop doing crime. No Stacey Dash. Let's talk about Jay-Z now. Uh, Jay-Z was talking about his verse. Um, God did. It's four-minute verse. Stay the hell have four minutes. Hope did his thing on that. And he jumped on Twitter spaces, which I'm sure he had to have somebody show him how to work it. Probably like had to have Blue Ivy show him how to work it. It's like, Blue Ivy, how you do Twitter spaces? You know what I mean? Maybe Solange did. Smacked him upside his head and showed him how to get on Twitter spaces. <laughs> uh so nice. So he was on there with the homie uh, Rob Markman. Shout out Rob Markman, who is a great journalist and also a pretty good rapper. Rob Markman is good for himself. Uh, DJ Khaled was on there. Uh, Lenny S was on there. Shout out Lenny S. And Jay-Z talked about the perception of him as a capitalist. And overall, the feelings that he has when the term capitalist is brought up to describe some of the cash kings of hip hop. This is what Hope had to say. Donnie, run the whole thing. Yeah, we're not going to stop. You know, this the hip hop is young. We still, we still growing, and we're not falling for that technology. Whatever you know, this public puts out there now. That you know, before was the American dream. Pull yourself out of bootstraps, and you can make yourself. You can make it in America. All these these lies that America told us our whole life. Um, and then when we start getting it, they try to lock us out of it. They start inventing words like, you know, capitalists and, you know, things like that. I mean, you know, we've been called nigger and monkeys and shit. I don't care. I don't, those words y'all come up with, y'all got to come up with stronger words. When I say y'all, I'm not talking about you. The words they come up with, they got to come up with stronger words. We're not going to stop. We're not going to be tricked out of our position. Y'all locked us out. Y'all created a system that, you know, doesn't include us. We said, fine, we went our alternate route. We created this music. We did our thing. You know, we hustled. We fucking killed ourselves to get to this space. And, you know, now it's like, you know, you know, eat the rich and think, man, we're not stopping. So that evolution is, you know, from us, you know, we came from selling <sighs> seven records and selling uh, records out our trunk and, you know, no radio play. And I think reasonable doubt that, 36,000 the first week or some something like that. I mean, I may be I may be uh adding a little to it. You know, so you know, we come from the I come from Marcy Projects. In my first house 615 Lexington Avenue, my grandmother's right, that's house enough. seven families. <laughs> that's enough. Uh Rachel? Well, I when I listen to Jay Z in this clip, in this moment on this Twitter space, it seems like there's a disconnect, which I already referenced earlier when I, you know, when you when there's a disconnect between you because you don't have Easy. loans versus us that do. You don't get it, and it's not that necessarily Jay Z doesn't get it, which is why I think he he constantly references where he's come from, where he used to be, but it's almost as if he's so far removed from that. It's like, you don't get it necessarily anymore. And I, I do understand the aspect of him talking in that the fact that he is a billionaire, he's a billionaire, the fact that he's a billionaire, well, that's what he says in the lyric, I guess. The fact that he is a billionaire is, you know, revolutionary 
in 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 that way because he coming no, from where in no way is him well, being a billionaire. Well, uh, listen, listen, wait. Can I? Can I? Can I? I'm sorry. Coming I'm sorry. from I'm so, I'm coming sorry. from where he's come from, he was never supposed to be that. And what he had to do, and how he's turned his artistry into entrepreneurship, and then to making a path for other people to have similar success. That is a thing, like revolutionary in that sense. And so I, his wealth, his uh -huh. achievements, his accomplishments, that is what I'm talking about. So, I mean, you might not agree with me using the word in that way, but I do believe that in that regard, just that it is something. And so I think that he's, when he talks about himself, he's holding on to that, like where he was come from to where he is now. But the fact that he start, starts talking about capitalism and being called a capitalist, JC, you are that. And I think he's holding on to what he's come from and he doesn't think that he can be a capitalist, but you are. And there's certain things that you have done since you've had money that constantly put you in that capitalist role. And I don't even know if when he's talking about this, because he says they, it almost feels like when he's saying they, he's talking about white people, but it's like black people who are calling you this. It's black people who are the ones who are calling you out on certain things that you rap about or certain things that you claim to be, but then you're living this kind of life that goes towards the NFL, his partnership, that goes to his relationship with Robert Kraft and buying him a car with Meek Mill, that goes towards, you already referenced, um, the diamond and the Tiffany ad. There's certain things that he does that put him in that capitalist lane and for him to either to have to, for him to have a disconnect to think that he's not that, and then to say that that's up there with using the N word, like I understand why people are uh, at up in arms about this two minutes of him talking and his explanation because it just seems like you just aren't getting it. So a couple of things. First of all, I'm sorry for interjecting when you were where you were talking. I apologize, mm -hmm. but I think the actual problem is is actually what you said. I think the problem is Jay-Z thinks that becoming a billionaire was revolutionary. I think we need to take that apart. Okay. 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 And Okay. So there's nothing revolutionary about becoming a billionaire. The odds are low that you will become that. But Jay-Z becoming a billionaire is not revolutionary. By the time you become a billionaire, your proximity to whiteness is such that it's almost impossible for you to be a revolutionary. That's just a reality. All right. By the time you become a billionaire, by the time you've done enough, uh, like uh, enough of that, your proximity to uh, the structures that make America are such that it's very, 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 very hard for you to call yourself a revolutionary. You might be what Hove is, which is an asset to the culture. People don't know how much Rock Nation, how much Jay Z does for people who are revolutionaries, right? For people who need their situations funded, like you could be the bank for them, but you're certainly not the revolutionary. You can't be a revolutionary hanging out and and doing business with Robert Kraft. You just can't, okay? Robert like Robert Kraft supported Donald Trump. He is an unabashed Trump supporter. I'm not saying I don't know Robert Kraft personally, but once you get to that level. You start not wanting to pay taxes. You are a capitalist. Like you, and, and being a capitalist in America is the furthest thing from being a revolutionary. He said that capitalism is the new N word, right? A capitalist mm -hmm. is the new N word. What mm -hmm. Jay Z doesn't understand is that it was capitalism that created mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. N word. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The N word exists because of American capitalism. And if unchecked, American capitalism will always create a new nigga, a new group of niggas, because American capitalism doesn't work unless there are niggers. It has to have its own niggers. Now, if we're to a point to where we say, hey, what we want to do is we want to be the power base and have the money to dictate who are the niggers in society. That's one thing. Maybe that's the only way to win, right? Maybe that's the only way to win. But the reality of the situation is 
That's how it goes. There's certainly nothing that's going to come from making a whole bunch of money in America that's going to influence equitable treatment of people. There's not going to be anything that comes from making a whole bunch of uh, uh, America that's going to in, in, in influence the division of power and equality in America. That's not going to happen. And we know that, mm-hmm. right? So I think that Jay-Z is mistaken. And I think that his immense and overwhelming talent has put him in a position to where he is equipped to have a certain lifestyle that um and have certain friends to let him see this from a different lens than all of us do correct and 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 he most certainly probably has the same heart that he did before because i'll be honest with you i'll just keep it real with you like selling some dope on the side of a corner to like keep your bills on is one thing having a whole project that kingpin shit that's a different thing Hove has never not been a capitalist. And the reality is when you are a capitalist, somebody suffers. And and even in that situation, somebody suffered. I'm not judging him personally or judging him or making a moral judgment. Far be it from me, the ex-TMZ employee, to make a moral judgment of, of, of anyone. But what I am saying is that in this situation right here, like there is no us. Like there's this new, this us that we speak of. There's no us, there's you. And what we're hoping is that you're such a good guy that when you're where you are, Mm -hmm. that you do right by us, but you don't have to. You never have to look at us again. You never have to shake hands with us. You never have to come where we are. You never have to do it. You can hang out with with Robert Kraft and 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 Ruben and the rest of those guys and the NFL owners, which you want to be one for the rest of your life. And niggas would still look up to you because of what you've been able to do. But there's no us. Yeah. The us on the us right now is only emotional. Now look, people can talk about what you can do for your community when you get in those situations. And I hear this a lot. Well, shit, when I get there, what I can do is reach back to the community. That's cool. But as long as there is a, a an economic system and a political system that allows somebody to be so astonishingly wealthy where there are other people who have nothing, there's not enough philanthropy, giving back, and job creation you can do to offset that. It's a systemic problem. And I think that these people that are in these positions, and I love them all. I love them all. I love all of these guys. They mean so much to me. But they better damn well know that. And so, like, what he, well, like, slavery was invented so somebody back in that day could be a Jay Z, could be a mm-hmm. fat cat making a bunch of fucking money where the niggers of the world had nothing. We just talked about Jackson, Mississippi. You own a yacht, they ain't got no water to drink. You're on a yacht, you're on, like, you're on a yacht. By the way, I'm on it. Fuck him. I'm on a yacht. Forget about him. I'm on a yacht. I'm in Greece. I'm doing these things when people in Jackson, Mississippi don't have any water to drink. I think there's a difference though with that. You're do- you're doing something. You're on vacation. You're, you know, like allowed to do nice things for yourself. I think what you're saying though is difference is when there's that much wealth, when you're on that status, when your song is bragging about you being a billionaire and how Hope's house has created multiple billionaires, there's a difference. It's it's like too great of a difference. I do want to say this about revolutionary. I think there's a difference between calling Jay-Z himself a revolutionary, which I did not, and saying the fact that he made money and his wealth is something that is revolutionary. I mean, the difference. I understand I'm, what you're saying. Okay, okay. I, I, I just I want to be clear know, that I, I am I, not yeah. saying he, yeah. I do not think he is some type of revolutionary. I think there's a difference when you look at a noun versus adjective, but that's just... I, you don't have to I, agree with me. I just want to be sure right, that I I'm not. I, I, I tend to think revolutionaries dismantle systems. And, and, a, and as a noun. Right. Okay. Well, his, I don't want to get stuck money, on the semantics his, of his, it. Okay. His money right. is it that the wealth that he has created, I think, is revolutionary. It, there, there's a difference. I agree with you. You're, what you were saying. But go ahead. No, I, we have to. There's breaking news. Donnie, did you see this? What happened? No. What is it? That means it's not. 
the, I'm being what? no, no, no. I, 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 I am being one thousand percent true. I don't know any other way to say I'm this. I'm nervous. Tiffany Haddish and Aries Spears have been accused of child sexual abuse. A Jane Doe and her brother allege in a lawsuit that both individuals recruited them into performing inappropriate, sexually suggestive acts and sketches when they were minors. This comes from the Daily Beast. Um, during their childhoods, Jane Doe and her brother said they called Tiffany Haddish Auntie Tiff. I'm going to read you the whole Daily Beast article. Uh, just knowing that this just broke. Full disclosure, I know Tiffany Haddish. Have known Tiffany Haddish for, for, for some years. Haven't had the chance to talk to Tiffany Haddish about this. Doubt that she would talk with me about it anyway. But this is what's coming out right now. This uh, So apparently, um, Tiffany Haddish, the comedian, had met their mother through the comedy circuit and used to refer to siblings as niece and nephew. But in a lawsuit filed pro se. What does pro se mean? What does it mean to be a lawsuit be filed pro se? For oneself, for oneself. For oneself. Um, on behalf of both her herself and her brother, who is a minor, the siblings allege that Haddish and her fellow comic, Aries Spears, recruited each of them to perform inappropriate acts on camera when they were children. The Jane Doe is now 22 years old. Her younger brother, John, is now 14. They have adopted pseudonyms due to their respective ages at the time of this. Um... It says sexually suggestive acts while on camera and underage. Uh, Jane was 14 when this video took place. John was seven. Their mother alleges that she and Haddish met through comedy and bonded over a shared strife. She talked to Daily Beast and said that her and Tiffany bonded over a divorce. Messy, messy, messy divorces. We got super, super close. And apparently this happened in the summer of 2013. Um... She attended a comedy camp with Tiffany Haddish, was a guest speaker. She told the child she'd find uh, found the perfect role for her in her very own commercial. And neither the mother or the child knew what it would entail. And apparently, uh, apparently it was something weird. So here it is. It says... The, I'm getting to it right now. Sorry, guys. It says it, it, they watch the recording booth allegedly it's an innocuous at first. It's a little strange. A group of co-eds were arguing over a Subway sandwich, but then the co-eds began eating the sandwich in a suggestive manner for opposite ends, moaning and making sexual noises as they both ate the sandwich in a manner that simulated the act of fellatio. The complaint um, claims that Spears told James to mimic what she had seen on the screen including the noises precisely like what she had heard throughout the video. The 14-year-old says she felt nervous and disgusted. She felt silent until Haddish returned to the room. Haddish verbally explained what was expected of the, of the plaintiff, then showed the plaintiff Jane Doe how to give fellatio, including movements, noises, moaning, and groaning, the lawsuit states. At this point, Jane, Doe, Jane told the Daily Beast, I knew 100% what they wanted out of me. She says uh, Spears allegedly looking on while a physically, emotionally, and mentally uncomfortable Jane received this instruction. Then she says that she tried to mimic what they wanted her to do, but it came out uh, super uncomfortable. Uh, Haddish paid her 100 bucks and then sent her home. There's going to be more to it, but... Uh, oh, so here it is. A year later, Haddish approached the, tele the children's mother with a similar pitch, recruiting Jane's little brother, John, for another video. Although the comedian allegedly told the family John would be filming a sizzle reel for Nickelodeon, the suit alleges the seven-year-old wound up starring in the video posted on Funny or Die and other pla online platforms titled Through a Pedophile's Eyes. What was the name of the video? A representative, Funny or Die, told the Daily Beast, Funny or Die found this video absolutely disgusting and would never produce such content. We were not involved with the conceptualization, development, funding, or production of this video. It was uploaded to the site as user-generated content and was removed in 2018 immediately after becoming aware of its existence. Both, both siblings allegedly attir, uh, attended the shoot, which the lawsuit claims took place in Spears' home. Jane says Haddish's behavior changed when the children arrived at the home, no longer in the company of their mother. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, it goes on and 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 on. Tiffany Haddish's people have not, have not in any way 
uh, responded to the allegations here. Okay. Well, her attorney um, said that this is an attempt for them trying to extort money from her. All right. She says that they said that they basically had to do a pedophile sketch in some way, making fun or making light of pedophilia. What do you, what do you make of something like this? Well, I don't know. It is interesting that the two that the individual bringing the lawsuit is not represented by an attorney. She's filing the suit by herself. Um, Tell us what that means. Well, it's just exactly that. I mean, you know, usually when you see somebody that's filing a lawsuit for the most part, or at least in, in a manner like this, they're represented by some sort of counsel there. But this, they went ahead and filed the lawsuit on their own. I did see in the article where it says they tried to reach some sort of um, settlement with um, Ari Spears, and I guess they didn't. So they went forward and filing the lawsuit, but they're doing it because you can't. Anyone can file a lawsuit. You don't anyone have to can, have. Yeah. You don't have to have legal representation, and they don't as of right now. Um, the plaintiffs in the lawsuit. I don't know. I, I mean, breaking news. There's really not much to say about it. If in fact everything happened the way that they said that it happened. Uh, I'm just, I, I'm just asking. I, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I don't want to. I don't want to comment on it. Okay. Like, how, how, I mean, like, I don't. I wouldn't even. I, know I have no clue. Cool. It's I, so I, outrageous. It's so out. It's such a sensitive subject, and it obviously deals with um, the allegations in this or dealing with a minor. That it's like I don't even want to touch it. I would. I'd rather wait to hear of some sort of response from um, Ari, from Tiffany, from their camp, their people. Um, yeah, it's just so fresh. I just don't even want to put any kind you know of. What the crazy thing is, it. what the crazy thing is, is I just, I just, I just like searched in my phone the name of the sketch, and I just it just hit me that I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like this is weird. But look, when I did that though, Dan Harmon, the creator of Community, uh, also had to apologized back in the day for a sketch that he had made about pedophilia. I just wonder, the only reason why I said if it's all true, I just wonder if there's a line here between if there is a line, and by the way, the guys, I know the bias police is out there. Um, I'd say right now, I've been around Tiffany Haddish. I do not think that in any way Tiffany Haddish is a danger to children. I don't know, but I do not think that she is. I wonder... If there's a line here between really bad, inappropriate comedy and actually like uh, hurting someone, and you never know what that line is. I guess the line is whatever the kids say that it would be. Well, the, just... the line is using actual minors, right? Actually, you yeah, know? yeah. You know no, what I mean? no, that's no, no. that's where, like, you know, should this be these allegations if they turn out to be true? I think that's where it is. It's like okay, comedy is comedy. And, you know, that's a whole nother thing to get into of what's too much and what goes too far. But if you're using minors, then like that's already a red, that's an issue. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see what happens with that. Tiffany Haddish is, she's trending right now. It's like, why is Tiff trending? And then I look at that. Wow, that is thing. not the breaking news. I mean. It's not great. No. It's not a great situation. Okay, it's not great. Real quick, a couple of things I want to um, shout out. Bank of America announces zero down payment, zero closing costs for Black and Hispanic first-time home buyers. Rachel, you missed out. I don't think that this city is one of the ones that that's uh, occurring. It's only certain cities where this Wrong. is happening in. Was LA Wrong. one? I saw Dallas. Charlotte, I Dallas, Detroit, Los Angeles, and Miami. Oh, all three cities I used to live in. Yep, in Miami. And you know what the only problem with this is? 55% of black people live in the South. Okay. I guess Miami's the South. Yeah, Miami. I I, I think, yeah, it's the South. Oh, people, don't consider, people don't consider Texas the South. Y'all not the South. Okay. Y'all only the South. Y'all only y'all Texas. Y'all only the South where y'all <laughs> want to be the South. Y'all are basically like 
Who could I think? Give me somebody. Y'all, y'all no. like the y'all like the Tiger Woods of the South. Now stop. Y'all, now Texas stop it is now. the Tiger stop Woods right of the South. Stop it. Um, that makes no sense. Stop it right now. Other Texas than is being- the Tiger Woods of the South. Y'all, the South, when y'all want to be the South. Other than that, y'all got some kind of weird background and nobody really knows because you're different from everybody else. That's Texas. Y'all, the Tiger Woods of the South. Y'all got this whole thing. We used to be our own country. Fucking Sam Houston, the Alamo. We got our own shit. We got the Texas Rangers. They like the police, but they cowboys. Y'all got your own shit. And it's really, you could be the South, but you really not. Y'all really cock, cock a South in more than anything. Y'all like the Tiger Woods of the South. And yeah, sometimes y'all go, we the South when it's time for the NAACP awards. You know what I mean? Or it's time to hang out with Michael Jordan. But then other times y'all just Texas. Texas is Texas. Texas really is Texas. Texas I can't, is Texas. I can't, man. I can't deny that. It's just Texas. You're right. right. You're right. Nigeria becomes the first country to officially ban the use of white models in advertising. You fucking with it or not? I'm not fucking with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Why? Y'all, this, was, this was not the way to do it. Because. No, this is not the way. If you want, if you want to promote, you know, Nigerians and where they have their, it's it's a Nigerian voice and Nigerian representation. I totally understand that, but to ban it and then the tax people when they use it, this is not the way. When they don't use um, people that are from Nigeria, it's just it's it's a little too far. You there 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 could have been some. Where where we meet in the middle to accomplish the same goal. You have to pay two hundred and forty dollars for every foreign mile you use that's not Nigerian. Or voice. Mm-hmm. The hope is that it will channel more creative projects into the country, and it'll boost opportunities <laughs> for native talent. Okay. I get the purpose behind it. <laughs> I'm fucking with it. Fuck it. We got our own government in Nigeria, <laughs> and we can make the rules. Fuck it. Like I don't give a fuck. It's probably wrong in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> it is wrong. But no, it's not. No, no. Fuck that. I'm not. If I'm not hedging shit, fuck it. Do it, Nigeria. Good. Come down there, try to fucking take everything. That's all they try to do. They come down there, try to take everything. It should. It should be done across Africa. Across Africa, it should be done. You know, got. I, I love it. Good for them. Wakanda forever, nigga. <laughs> um, Donnie, let's go with mailbag. Mailbag time. Time to read your letters and then we'll reply to them. Oh, it's mailbag time. Write us with your queries and we'll chime in. All right. Uh, the first question is from Jew Brooks 3. 12 on insta they um so this question was kind of already answered at the top of the podcast but van you specifically asked for me to look out for questions about tuesday segments so i'm asking anyway so they asked van's van student loan forgiveness take was a bit right was a bit no it was not he wasn't dead ass serious i was dead ass serious and i did i did i doubled down jew brooks 312 Jew books three one two, Jew books three one two. I fuck Brooks. I doubled down. It wasn't a bit at all. You're a bit, a <laughs> bit annoying. <laughs> no, shout out to you, Jew Brooks. <laughs> shout out to you. All right, next one. All right, next one is from anonymous T Rex on Instagram. They ask, "Who is your favorite white artist?" What? Oh, um, it's a good question. Like musician, actor, artist. So yes, all of the above. Like music. Okay, Musically? I guess an artist in general. It could be anything. It could be an author. It could be a. Let's just do music. Let's do music. Favorite white musician of all time. It's a lot of good white music. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I think. You're gonna go with Justin Timberlake. Sh- no. The Timber Snake. No. Who? Kenny Loggins. <laughs> I interviewed him not too long. He's great. Ago. Garth Brooks. God damn. Rope in is the he, wind. 
Is he problematic in any way? I hesitate. Hell I'm no. Like, okay, I was like, Gawk has he done man. anything? That's why I hesitated because I was like, oh, I don't know if he's. I don't think so. I love Garth Brooks. I'm a big fan. I've been to concert. His concert. Garth Brooks. It, I think that's it. I, I don't think I forget anybody. Garth Brooks. It's it's a tight one for me between three people. Well, you can't name three. I'm not okay, name I'll three. pick. I'll pick. Who are the three? Go. Sting. Okay. Okay. Kurt Cobain. Okay. And Josh Home from Queens of the Stone Age. Queens of the Stone Age is my favorite band. Okay. Um, I gotta go with I gotta go with Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain. All right. Changed my life. Changed my life. Kurt Cobain changed my life. I had a real grunge era. You know what I mean? I was looking down like this. Were you wearing like yeah. the clothes as well? Yeah, I was. Like, did you have like... The like, fucking thing on my neck? Yeah. In fucking Terry Lathan's house wearing something on your... No, <laughs> fuck no, nigga. <laughs> you said you dressed like... <laughs> I dressed like them trying... in terms of like wearing the shit, you know, and it was it was kind of weird because I was like a chubby grunge kid. So like you had like a... You had to get like a big flannel for it to be loose. You know, shit, my fucking jeans all on the dirty Louisiana ground. And then I, I did my dad one day was like, you see this? This is over. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I never told you this story. I never told you the story of my dad finding the lyrics to Pearl Jam's Jeremy in my pocket. What's this? So I had printed out the lyrics to Jeremy and, uh, it, 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 and, and I had them in my pocket. And I don't know why I had the lyrics to the song in my pocket, but I did. I printed out the lyrics and I had them in my pocket. And my dad comes in. And my dad, my dad, looks at me, he goes, come here, boy. Come here. I'm like, all right, come here. Sit down. And he pulls out the lyrics. He goes, what is this? And I was like, it's a song. What you mean it's a song? It seemed like some sacrilegious shit to me. I was, I was like, what are you talking about? He was like, why he gnashed the teacher's breasts? Why he gnashing? You know what I'm saying? That happens in the Bible, the gnashing of teeth. Do you know what this means, boy? This gnashing that you speak of? I'm like, what are you talking? What are you talking? Gnashing teeth? What are you like? What are you? What are you talking about? Hey, am I to understand that whoever Jeremy is blew his fucking brains out at the end of the song? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, like he he committed suicide, like in 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 the song, like you know what I mean. He didn't even he had he had to deduce that because Ebony told him about the video. Ebony ratted me out that he killed himself <laughs> with the, with, with a gun at the end of the song. She ratted me out, and this nigga said, "Uh uh, uh uh." Like I had an electric guitar, all this shit got taken oh, away. Oh, you did. I was trying to be in a band. The band you, was with, with me and Joe. What was the Joseph name of the band? Guillotine. <laughs> with me, Joe well, Satterhegan. It needed to stop. Yeah, guillotine. Like, oh, it it needed guillotine to was stop. the name of the band. So. Wait, wait, wait. I, when I was like in my, I wasn't as deep of in a grunge phase or, phase or anything like that, like you, but I was walking around the house and I was like singing Limp Biscuit, and I was going. Great stuff. I did it all for the nookie. Come on, the nookie. And my dad goes, what did you say? <laughs> I didn't know what nookie meant. Oh, wow. So you can take I that cookie. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So my dad, yeah. And I was like, so you can take that cookie and stick it up. Yeah. Because it was really like, and my dad was like, what, what the fuck are you on right now? <laughs> the judge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I asked that the other day. Do you remember that? I was like, you remember I was singing the lyrics to that song? It's like the time that I said, man, I have to empty up all my bank account to go see Otis Redding perform. And my dad goes, Rachel, he's dead. <laughs> and I cry more. <laughs> That's the way. Bro, I mourned right. him that day. I mourned him that day. Rachel, he died in the 70s or 60s. I can't even remember. 70s, 70s, 70s. Uh, okay, what's one more, part? Donnie. All right. Uh, let's go with Dex underscore 07H. If you needed to be remembered remember for something, what would you want that to be? 
soup kitchen. Mm. I'm just kidding. I was about to say that's <laughs> a good one. Kidding. That's just kidding. <laughs> I'm about to say that's a good one, man. Um, that's too deep. I can't. I gotta really think about that. That's really deep. That is deep. And I can't go there right now. Not after singing the about the nookie. Yeah, I like. I don't think that I've that I've done anything yet to be remembered by. Because it's yeah. not a moment. I, yeah. I would really need to think about that. Because that's like a legacy question. Can we do yeah. another one? <laughs> yes. Do it. Do yes. another one. Do another one. All right. Amanda Bake or Baki fifteen asks, best book you both read this year? Question mark. Oh, without a doubt, it's miss me with that. Miss me with that. You know, real tears. It changed my life. <laughs> and since then, pff, niggas been missing me with that bullshit. They know, miss me. I was. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. What? I was a. I was a cold whore <laughs> before I read Miss Me with that. But after I read it, As if I became a bad time. bitch. As if I became a bad it. bitch. I hate you. After I read Miss Me with that. My target audience. As if that was. Well, then obviously <laughs> mine is fat, crazy, and tired. Oh! Obviously. Okay. All right. You have an unexpected ally of the week? Uh, I mean, I'll just do a throwback to the White House Twitter account. Oh, that's great. Yeah. White yeah. House Twitter account putting people in. Um, I mean, we could go there as to why some of these politicians got such big PPP loans, but we won't. We'll just acknowledge the fact that you were calling them out for their hypocrisy. Before we leave, Kanye West, uh, Kanye West is dissing people. Uh, he's going crazy again. On my what? Kids are, my kids are going on Instagram. My kids are going to Donya, Donda. They're not going to Sierra Canyon. Then he says, Charlemagne the God and Chris, get your motherfucking popcorn. And the, can you please stop? No, we need to talk in person. You don't have an say to where the kids go. Why you get say? Because you have. Why you get say say? Because you have white. From my mom, please, please tell him to stop mentioning my name. I'm almost 67 years old and don't always feel great. And this stretches me, stresses me to no end. Y'all don't have so so over my black children and where they get to go to school. They will not do Playboy and sex tapes. Tell your Clinton friends to come get me. I'm here. What are you reading? This is Kanye West on his Instagram. Don't let Chris, Kanye West, don't let Chris make you do Playboy like she made Kyle and Kim do. Hollywood is a giant brothel. Pornography destroyed my family. I deal with the addiction. Instagram promotes it. Not going to let it happen to Northy in Chicago. All right. Poor Kanye. You got all <laughs> caught up on the latest news, baby. Okay. Take your thing caps off, but do not stop your kids from going to Sierra Canyon. I am Van Lathan Jr. <laughs> I'm Rachel Lynn Lindsay. Crazy ass world. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs>